Hello and welcome to the Controller Chronicles, the series where I showcase unusual controllers that most of you probably have never heard of before. This time on the series I'm bringing you this. This is the Newport TriFire Pro Stick 3 for the Atari 2600, the ColecoVision, the Commodore 64, the Sega Master System, etc., etc. Basically anything that uses is the, um, the DB9 controller port standard. Now, what's interesting about this stick is this stick was released around 1983-1984 and has a lot of things going for it that most other arcade sticks don't have. For one, um, it has a solid metal shaft that works as that's not plasticky as well. I don't know if my camera will be able to pick that up very well, but hear that? micro switches instead of leap switches instead of just typical um, cheap construction this thing actually has uh, micro switches which is a big surprise um, which makes it very high quality and makes it a very good um, alternative to the standard controller used for the 2600 and other systems as well it's called the tri fighter because of this this button here is actually three buttons. There's a button right here, there's a button right here, and there's a button in the middle. So you can play those two, those games for the ColecoVision that require two um, fire buttons, as well as pressing the middle one will press them both at the same time. Now, since I don't have a ColecoVision and I have no plans to get one, and since my cord originally that came with it was frayed, um, I've since replaced it with another controller um, from, from another Atari 2600 controller that didn't work. And I simply have the one little connector that plugs into the 2600. This is the female port. Now, there is the male port at, that came out on, on like a Y connector originally um, that would plug into the ColecoVision, but like I said, my cord was frayed, so it wouldn't work anymore, so I decided to just do some soldering and fix the cord because these things are very simple. They don't even have a really circuit board to, to really speak of. It's just uh, the signal is going directly um, to, the, to the wires in the cord they go directly into the system, you know, the up, down, left, right, and then the button. So I, I wired all three fire buttons, um, fire buttons to the single button, so it doesn't matter which one I press, it's fire no matter what. So all that said, let's show you some gameplay. Um, one more thing it has is this little switch here, but I'll get into that in a minute. Okay, so let's plug it in. Alright, so the first game I'm going to demo Classic Berserk. Put it in. Click it up. Alright, here we go. Now, my 2600 here is AV modded, but this is an HDTV, so <laughs> running a 2600 on an HDTV is not really the best solution for getting um, high quality picture. Alright. Immediately died. I'm not doing very well, but as you can probably tell, um, this is just a typical control stick that works very well. Uh, being able to maneuver the stick with your hand and, you know, the fire button. Um, it feels very comfortable in the hand. It's not very heavy. It's not very light either. It just feels perfect. No. It occurs to me I should show you some. I should show you guys what it what it feels like in the hand. All right. So I'm left-handed, but even if you're right-handed, you can hold it in your left hand. Have easy access to the fire button and then move around the stick. If you're left-handed like me, you would do it the opposite way. It really doesn't matter. Or you can hold it like this and grip it with uh, your two middle fingers. It's a very comfortable controller to use, very easy to use, and uh, yeah, it's, I just like it, prefer it much over basically any other 2600 controller I own. One thing it doesn't have is rubber feet. Now, I don't know if there was originally rubber feet on there because, you know, this thing is, you know, more than 20 years old now, um, more, more closer to 30 years actually, but um, yeah, th this thing is just perfect. Um, fire button, joystick. 
2600. So that being said, there was Berserk. Let's put in my favorite game, Vol. Here's Phoenix for the 2600. Here we go. That doesn't count. I'm not even at the game yet. Reset. Okay, let's play it now. Whoops. Now I know the 2600 has hundreds of these kind of games, but for some reason Phoenix is just my absolute favorite. This is the one I go come back to over and over. These ones you have to hit in the middle or they regenerate. See, they come back with their wings. An extremely basic game, but you know, it's fun, that's all you need. So, as I was saying, there's one other thing that this controller has, and that's this 4 and 8. You might be wondering, well, what's that about? Well, actually, there's a gate here that you can remove that slides up, and then you can configure to either 8 or 4. If you put it to 4, now the, um, the gate here is, will only go up, down, left, and right. You cannot put it on an angle. If you put it to 8, now you can put it onto an angle, any angle you want. It's an eight-way joystick. This way, it's a four-way joystick. So you might be wondering, why would you want a four-way joystick if you have the eight option? Well, it depends on the game. Some games, especially for the 2600, um, are better suited to having only the four directions, such as Pac-Man, or Miss Pac-Man in this case, because this is a much better version of Miss Pac-Man than the Atari's original version of Pac-Man was. You know, it's one of those games that are largely considered to be one of the worst for the systems, yet it's sold the most. Alright, so here's Miss Pac-Man, which is infinitely superior. And let's going to play this for just a minute um, with the four-way joystick. Here we go. For those unfamiliar, Miss Pac-Man, um, for the 2600 does not contain nearly the flaws of Pac-Man. So if you're looking for a Pac-Man game for the 2600, this is the one to go for. Using this Micro Switch control joystick um, is just a breeze to play Pac-Man. This feels just like it was like meant to, meant to be played for this way. Oh, whoops. whoops. Well, let's see if I can complete this.
So yeah, in conclusion, this is a really great joystick to own. Um, a lot of fun. And it works very well. So if you're looking to replace um, a 2600 joystick, or if you want, simply want um, something that's that will last you um, for years, or if you're looking to really just get it into 2600 for the first time, this is the one joystick I would recommend above all others. This again is the TriFire Pro Stick 3 um, by what's it? What's the company? Is Newport Controls Inc. Or it says Caltron. Yeah, so it's probably Newport that made this, but I who knows, you know, this is super old. Um, so I don't know where to get one of these. You might want to check eBay or something like that. But uh, but yeah, typically, but watch out for the cord because if the cord is frayed or, you know, it might not work anymore. Um, but in my case, I just simply, you know, swapped it out with another controller that I had, you know, that the controller itself was sort of like worn up and, and didn't want to work correctly anymore. So I just desoldered the cord off of it and replaced it. And, you know, the cords are all the same. So this will work um, on basically anything with the DB9 um, controller standard. This will work with the um, Commodore 64, the Atari 2600, the Atari 7800, um, Let's see, there's tons of other 8-bit computers, you know, the British um, British ones, like the BBC Micros and all that. Um, work with the Sega Genesis to some extent, um, the Sega Master System to some extent. And, yeah, this is the TriFighter Pro Stick 3. Interesting joystick. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and if you want to watch um, more episodes in the series, check the um, video description down below where I'll put uh, links to the past episodes. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.